Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator. In this session, I will be discussing a very important topic in the connective tissue disorders that is the pseudo gout. So pseudo gout, it is a form of right it is a form of crystalline arthropathy that is what is your pseudo gout and in these patients of pseudo gout let me tell you that there will be deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals that is cppd crystals okay and what exactly is the definition of the pseudo gout pseudo gout it is a crystalline arthropathy and in these patients, what is the crystals which are accumulated? That is calcium, pyrophosphate, deposition occurs. Right? Calcium pyrophosphate deposition occurs. And this calcium pyrophosphate deposition it occurs in the fibrocartilage and as well as the hyaline cartilage okay it occurs in the, the deposition occurs in fibrocartilage and as well as the hyaline cartilage and this will result in the development of a clinical entity called chondrocalcinosis. Right, this results in development of a clinical entity called chondrocalcinosis. And this calcium pyrophosphate deposition in fibrocartilage and hyaline cartilage, this can cause an acute crystal induced arthritis. Okay, this can induce crystal induced arthritis that is acute crystal induced arthritis and that is what is your pseudo gout and this pseudo gout let me tell you it is a degenerative arthropathy. Right, it is a degenerative arthropathy, and this pseudo gout, it is a chronic inflammatory polyarthritis. Right, chronic inflammatory polyarthritis. So that is what you mean by the word pseudo gout. Okay, so what is pseudo gout now? It is a crystalline arthropathy where there is accumulation of calcium pyrophosphate deposition in fibrocartilage and hyaline cartilage, resulting in chondrocalcinosis. And this can cause, right, this can cause acute crystal induced arthritis, which is a degenerative arthropathy and a chronic inflammatory polyarthritis. That is what is your pseudo gout. Now, this CPPD deposition, that is calcium pyrophosphate deposition, can also be an asymptomatic condition and which is detected incidentally as chondrocalcinosis on radiographs. Okay, so this can be asymptomatic as well. Okay, right, and if it is asymptomatic, right, how is that that is being diagnosed? It is detected incidentally. Right, that is detected incidentally on the x-rays. Right, and let me tell you, the prevalence of this pseudo gout, it increases with age. Right, the prevalence of this particular pseudo gout, it increases with the age of the individual. Now, what is the etiology for the development of the pseudo gout? 
The etiology include number one hyperparathyroidism. So in patients with hyperparathyroidism, right? In patients with hyperparathyroidism, where there is increased parathormone levels, right? Where there is increased parathormone levels. This will cause the calcium reabsorption from the bone and it will increase the calcium deposition within the serum and that can get deposited in the form of calcium pyrophosphate deposition. And the other etiology of the pseudogout is familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia. Right, familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia that is the second etiology for the pseudogout and the third etiology is right the third etiology is hemochromatosis what is hemochromatosis it is a disorder which is characterized by excessive accumulation of iron in the body that is what is called as hemochromatosis and even the other important electrolyte abnormality that can contribute to the CPPD deposition is hypomagnesemia. Right, hypomagnesemia, even this also will confer the risk of, right, even this also confer the risk of the CPPD deposition. Right, but most cases, you know, they may have no association at all. But these are the underlying etiologies either hyperparathyroidism, familial hypercalciuric, hypercalcine, hypocalciuric hypercalcemia, hemochromatosis, and the hypomagnesemia. The clinical features, if you observe in pseudogout, pseudogout is most often seen in persons aged 60 years or old. Right, more than or equal to 60 years, you have the development of this particular pseudogout. And what will be the features of this particular pseudogout? It is characterized by acute, recurrent and rarely chronic arthritis, mainly involving the large joints. Okay, so it is a disorder where it is an acute, recurrent and Rarely chronic arthritis involving the large joints. Right, involving the large joints. And most commonly, which particular joints are affected? That is, knee joint is most commonly affected, then followed by that there is involvement of the wrist joint. So these are the joints which are commonly affected and it is almost always accompanied by radiographic chondrocalcinosis. Right, radiographic Right, almost always associated with or accompanied by radiographic chondrocalcinosis in the affected joints. So what are those affected joints? That is your knee joint and as well as the wrist joint. Right, and we have a syndrome called crowned dense syndrome. Right, crowned dense syndrome. So crowned dense syndrome, it is caused by pseudogout of the atlantoaxial junction, right? This is also a pseudogout, but it is a pseudogout of the atlantoaxial junction. Right, it is the atlanto, it is the pseudogout of atlantoaxial junction. See, what is this atlantoaxial junction? It is nothing but your first and as well as the second cervical vertebra. That is what is your, see, first cervical vertebra is atlas and second cervical vertebra is axis. 
So your crowned den syndrome, it is a pseudo gout of the atlanto axial junction, and it is associated with crown like calcification. Right? Crown like calcification. And where do you have this crown like calcification? That is around the dens. See, for the vertebra called axis, we have a projection, upward projection called dens. On this particular dens, you have calcifications in the form of a crown like, which and these patients with the crowned dens syndrome. What will be the presentation? These patients, they can or they have severe neck pain. Right? Severe neck pain. There can be even development of rigidity and they can also have high fever. And you know, this can mimic meningitis or this can mimic your polymyalgia rheumatica. So these are the clinical features of the pseudo gout. Then how do you investigate? So what are the investigations of the pseudo gout? See the pseudo gout like gout frequently develops 24 to 48 hours after the major surgery. Right this pseudo gout. It develops. 24 to 48 hours after right after the major surgery okay and how will you identify this pseudo gout right you have to do a synovial fluid aspirate So the synovial fluid aspirate, it will show you the presence of positively birefringent calcium pyrophosphate crystals. Right, positively birefringent calcium pyrophosphate deposition where in the joints, which particular joints? that is knee joint and as well as the wrist joint. That is what how you will diagnose this particular pseudo gout. And finally, if you see the treatment, the drugs that you have to give in acute episodes. So the drugs that you give in acute episodes are the NSAIDs. NSAIDs are helpful in the treatment of the acute episodes and apart from that the other drugs that can be given for acute attacks is the colchicin. This colchicin 0.6 right 0.6 milligrams they are given orally right and this is given Right, this is given once daily or twice daily. This colchicin, it is more effective for profile access rather than the acute attacks. Right, they are more effective in case of prophylaxis rather than acute attacks. Okay, now apart from this NSAIDs and as well as colchicin, aspiration of the inflamed joint and aspiration of the intra, so aspiration of right, aspiration of inflamed joint and Intraarticular injection of triamcinolone, right? You can also do intraarticular injection of
triamcinolone. So this dosage of triamcinolone, it is around 30 to 40 milligrams. Right, that is around 30 to 40 milligrams. So intra-articular injection of triamcinolone 10 to 40 milligrams should be injected into the joint depending upon the size of the joint. Right? This is about the treatment of severe pseudogouty arthritis. That is intra-articular injection of triamcinolone. And your triamcinolone is nothing but your steroid. Right? And the degenerative arthropathy associated with CPPD can involve joints not usually affected by the osteoarthritis, right? See, the joints which are not usually affected by osteoarthritis, it includes the glenohumeral joint. It includes the wrist joint. It includes the patellofemoral compartment of the knee, right? So, which are not usually affected by osteoarthritis, you know, there will be degenerative arthropathy associated with the CPPD. Right? And if you take pseudo rheumatoid arthritis, pseudo rheumatoid arthritis of CPPD, it affects metacarpophalangeal joints and as well as the wrist. And in both the conditions, radiographs, they demonstrate the chondrocalcinosis. That is in pseudo gout and pseudo rheumatoid arthritis, the radiographs, they demonstrate the chondrocalcinosis. And degenerative changes such as asymmetric joint space narrowing and as well as the osteophyte formation. So this is what you will see in the pseudogout. So what is pseudogout now? Pseudogout, it is a crystalline arthropathy where you have CPPD deposition and the most common joints affected are the knee joint and as well as the wrist joint. And the underlying etiologies that includes hyperparathyroidism, hemochromatosis, right? Familial hypocalciuric, hypo, hypercalcemia hypomagnesemia, these are all the etiologies for your pseudogout, right? And the investigation is by analysis of aspiration of the synovial fluid where you have positively birefringent rhomboid shaped crystals and in acute gout, the treatment is anesides. For prophylaxis, we give colchicin and in severe pseudogout, we give intra-articular triamcinolone injection that is at a dosage of 10 to 40 milligrams depending upon the size of the joint. So this completes the discussion of pseudogout. Thank you very much.